Hey, I'm Kaylee with Rooted Revival. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to talk about everybody's favorite topic, goats, and in particular, baby goats. We are not kidding this year, but I wanted to show you what we keep in our kidding kits and why we have it there. So if you are new to goats, this is going to be super helpful for you and just kind of giving you an idea what to prepare for if you are going into kidding season for the first time, or maybe you've done it a bunch of times, but if you're like me, you always like to see what other people are doing because there's always so many good ideas out there. In addition to talking about what's in our kidding kits, I'm also going to show you our kidding pen and the way that we have it set up. We finally got it exactly like, <laughs> don't eat my hair. <laughs> we finally got it exactly how we want it and it's been so efficient to have it set up and just ready to go. So I'm gonna show you that as well. <laughs> I've got lots of helpers. Unfortunately, these guys aren't going to be helping me the whole time because oh my goodness, what good helpers they are. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so let's dive into it. <laughs> So welcome to our barn. I'm going to show you our kidding area, our kidding stall that we have set up. Um, but first, let's talk about the supplies that we keep on hand. I have a full blog post on everything that we keep in each of our kits. So we have one for chickens, one for goats, and then we have a basically like a kidding kit. Now we also have the horses, but that's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. In my homestead management binder, which I'll also link below, there is basically a um, supply inventory. So you can go through and like list out everything that you have, how much of it you have. And that was really helpful when I did that. And I finally like sat down and went through my supplies. When an emergency happens, you don't wanna be searching for your supplies and then find out that you don't even have the right thing on hand. I cannot stress to you how important it is to have your supplies organized and ready to go. So just a little background to clarify, both myself and Lindy were raised around livestock. Um, this is something we're very familiar with and we both do have college level education in animal and veterinary care. We, we do have a good amount of experience with it. Um, that being said though, we are always learning and especially in the area of goats, it's a very, I guess, untapped area. Um, not a lot of vets even specialize in goats. So a great thing that you can do if you're just starting out is to find a mentor who's an experienced goat owner. Now they might have different opinions from mine and I encourage you to always be learning about different thoughts and different ideas and different ways of doing things um, and find the ones that work for you. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you what we keep on hand. And again, that might be different from what you prefer or the method that you've learned but make the right choice for you is what I always encourage you to do, but just don't stop learning. So with that being said, one of the best things that you can do is to get your supplies ready, whether that's your medical first aid kits for your animals or your kidding kits, which is what we're going to talk about today. You don't ever wanna be caught unprepared. I know it can be a pain to try and get everything stocked and to spend money on things that you may never use, but let me tell you, that's the best case scenario is that you don't end up using these things because that means that you never had that type of medical emergency that required those supplies. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have it because I'm telling you animals never schedule emergencies at good times or when vets are on call or when they're in an area where they have cell phone service, we've had that happen. So do your own research educate yourself, empower yourself, and get your supplies ready so that if an emergency happens, you can do the best that you can until veterinarian support can arrive to help you. So one of the best things that we've actually done is this. We organized, and by we, I mean me and Lindy watched me do it. Um, we organized all of our supplies into these five gallon buckets. Now, the great thing about these buckets is that they're super cheap. Um, I think they're like five bucks at Lowe's. For $5, you get a super large, super sturdy container. I know for a fact, like Tupperwares do not hold up as well as these. Plus it's waterproof. It keeps everything nice and clean and it's portable. That's one of my favorite things is like literally when there's an emergency, I grab my buckets and I go. And even if we have to evacuate or if there's ever that kind of emergency where we need to truly like leave the area with our animals, we're able to take our medical supplies 
with us. So organizing our supplies into these five gallon buckets was really one of the best things that I've taken the time to do since we've had livestock. And plus it makes a handy seat. And let me tell you those long nights on kidding watch in the barn, you can just sit right on your medical kit. You can't do that with a Tupperware. So that's just an added bonus, right? I cannot tell you how many nights I've spent sitting on this waiting for goat babies, waiting. And the goats are like, just kidding, not tonight. That's why it's called kidding season, I'm convinced. Okay, so I've got my trusty kitting kit and I also have just my regular goat first aid kit here. Um, now I brought out both because what happens is I actually kind of split my supplies between the two. There are some supplies that are really kitting specific and they stay in this bucket. Um, however, there are some that I use not only at kitting time, but also just for general emergencies, um, general first aid. So I actually keep them in the other kit. So again, the great thing about having the buckets when kitting season comes, I can just grab both of the kits easily. And hey, there's two seats, one for me, one for Wendy. So let's dive in. Um, full disclosure, we are not kidding this year. So I haven't actually gone through this since our last kidding over a year ago. So it might be a bit chaotic in here, but this is what it is. Okay, the first supply you have to have are these, um, we called them chucks at the vet clinic that I worked at, but um, they're like the puppy pee pads. And these are the best thing because not only are they like super absorbent, um, but they just keep the whole area so clean. So when baby is coming out, we keep this under mom. So all the fluids, everything like that lands on this nice, easy cleanup and you remove it, especially if you're kidding in the warmer season, you don't want a lot of fluids and things like that in the stall. It does not take long for flies and bugs to find it. These go under mama and when you know all those fluids are coming out, we usually change these out. Um, and then once baby comes, it lands on one of these, hopefully. <laughs> um, it keeps the baby clean. You can immediately wrap it right up in it, wipe it down. So these are the best thing ever. In addition to these, I would also suggest, um, I don't have any in my bag right now because we just have some in our tack room, um, but I would also suggest that you keep some plastic bags. So um, either tall white kitchen bags or the big black ones are super handy to have on hand. Um, I used to actually lay them underneath our bedding so that then I could literally just like wrap it all up, you know, kind of like a crime scene and like wrap it all up and just throw it all away. It keeps everything so much cleaner. Um, next, I just have some towels. These are actually little homemade rags. I keep these on hand. These are just nice because they're washable. They have like terry on one side, so they're super soft and kind of a smoother on the other side. So these are really nice for like wiping baby's face, things like that. You can never really have too many rags and towels on hand. In addition to these, during kidding season, we bring out a bag of like older towels. We usually go to the thrift store and we'll buy just, you know, five to 10 towels wash them up, have them all nice and clean, and we'll put them in a bag so that they stay clean and we keep them in the barn so that we can dry off the baby and all of that good stuff. You can never have too many towels on hand. So along with the cleanliness lines, I also like to just keep some wet wipes in there. You just never know, even if it's wiping off your own hands, it's just nice to have some little wet wipes in your kit along with some paper towels, things like that for just general cleaning. Um, whether you need to wash your hands a lot, you can't always like get to a faucet. So sometimes just having a wet wipe is really nice and handy. Okay, next I have a bag. This is my random bag of syringes. I do have another bag like this in my regular kitting kit, but obviously with more variety of syringes and needles. Um, but it's good to have just a few in the kitting kit. So if you need to give a fast injection of BOCI or something like that, you have a needle handy. Um, I usually keep these ones that already have the needle on them because even those seconds can matter sometimes. So I like to have some that are already have the needle attached, ready to go. And so I have a, several of those in here. And then I have some larger syringes. So these ones are nice. Um, for if we need to do tube feeding, if we need to be drenching the mom, anything like that. This one does have a little bit smaller end. I generally like the larger 
ends of the syringe for our tube feeding, um, which is why we have this. This is something I would definitely recommend that you have on hand just in case you never know. Um, so again, it's got the bigger tip on it. It is a large syringe, as you can see, it fits 60 cc's. So you can buy these at your feed store or you can order it. We'll talk more about that later, where to get all your supplies. Um, and then this is a tube. So this one is made specifically for baby goats and baby sheep. What's nice about this is it's not rigid. Some of them are very rigid, which is nice in certain species, but for young, just born animals, um, I like to have one that's a little bit more flexible. So this goes on the syringe. So this goes down baby's throat um, and all the way into their stomach chamber. So what that does is it allows you to go ahead and directly feed them. That's actually much safer once you learn how to properly tube. You know, if you're putting it in, you need to make sure that it goes into the esophagus. But once you've made sure that, it's actually a lot safer to feed them this way because there's no chance of fluids getting into their lungs, making them aspirate. Um, whereas if you're just like putting this syringe in their mouth and shooting liquids in there, there's a lot higher chance of them aspirating with that than with a tube that's delivering that directly into their stomach. If you're uncomfortable with any of these procedures, whether it's giving injections or tubing an animal, anything like that, it's good to practice that when you're not in an emergency situation. It's that much harder to do these things, even if you're good at it, when you're stressed and when your animal is in distress. So practice these things now, find a mentor who's really skilled at it, who can help you um, have the vet teach you. Definitely find somebody who is knowledgeable and skilled who can teach you these things if you're not comfortable with them yourself. Um, moving on, we have another bag with some more syringes, there's some gloves in there. So definitely, definitely have gloves on hand. That is so handy. We actually have a full box of them as well, just in our feed room, which is right next to our kidding stall. So that's why I don't have a ton of them in here anymore. Look, I even took the time to write syringes on the bag in case I like didn't know what it was. Good for me. One of the single best things you can have, a flashlight, a little flashlight with batteries. Make sure it's working. I don't know what it is, but as soon as you go to either find a flashlight or a thermometer, you will be able to find neither and neither one will have batteries that work. So make sure you have multiples and absolutely the same thing with thermometers. Have multiple in your kits, whether it's in your kitting kit, your regular kit, always make sure you have thermometers on hand you can never have too many because you won't be able to find them or for some reason they will have magically stopped working anytime you have an emergency oh tell me in the comments if you have that same issue i don't know what it is i do keep some alcohol wipes they're just you never know when you're going to need them so i do keep some of them in the kitting kit as well as in our regular first aid kit what else do we have Ooh, scissors these are always good. So like thermometers, have a pair of scissors, have a couple pairs of scissors because you don't know when you're gonna need them. Always good to have those in all of your kits, regardless of if you ever actually use them or not. Lube. So funny story about this actual tube of OB lube. Um, this is usually very easy to find at your farm store, except if, apparently if you're in Idaho and it's March and February, I went to three different farm stores looking for this and I got the very last one in the county. In the county, like I had them check and it was the last one. So stock up on lube, now we know. But OB lube, always handy, especially if you need to go in and check to see babies, or, you know, positioning, anything like that. So lesson of the day, um, get yourself some lube because it sells out quickly, apparently. <laughs> Iodine. So you will want 7% iodine, um, and that's to dip the umbilical cord of baby. So once baby comes out, it's going to probably have kind of a longish umbilical cord. Usually you don't need to tie it. Um, usually it's just fine. However, you are going to want to dip it. This just helps dry it up and make sure that there's no infections until it falls off naturally. That's how we do it. This is another area where people have different methods and find the one that's right for you. But we like to just dip in the iodine solution. Um, if it's really long, we will sometimes cut it. 
if we absolutely have to and if it's dried at the bottom. Normally though, we just dip and leave it alone. So I actually like to use the syringe cases. So these are nice because you know they're nice and clean and you can fill it with iodine and kind of scoop up the umbilical cord, you know, make sure you get the whole umbilical cord in there, drop it in and you can go kind of all the way up to baby's belly and just use that as your little container to dip in. So iodine in a small container that you can put the iodine in and dip the umbilical cord. Oh, while we're on the lines of that, chlorhexidine solution. So chlorhexidine is my favorite. Um, it's just a good all around antiseptic. It's going to, you know, whatever it is that you're needing to clean, whether it's your hands spraying them off, you know, the animal wounds, things like that, a cl good chlorhex spray is all that you need. So we have this just out in our barn. We always have one on hand and whether it's spraying off our own hands or something else, this is our go-to. Um, but of course you can also use like an iodine scrub or something like that, but especially if you're going to be going in, you know, and reaching inside mama to feel for baby, feel for positioning, things like that. You want to clean yourself first. We don't want to introduce any more issues than we have to. So make sure you're either scrubbing with Chlorhex, an iodine scrub, um, a surgical prep scrub, something of that nature. So I also keep a Providine scrub in here. Again, this is just really, really good for making sure that you're not introducing any new bacteria. Um, Providine's a great one for like skin infections and hi Stanley and things like that. Uh, it's also a good one for just, you know, cleaning your arms and your, and your hands, things like that before having to reach into mama to feel for baby. Okay, bottles. So I do have basically like a full Tupperware of bottles. We've had lots of bottle babies over the years, um, but I like to always have some ready to go actually in our kitting kit. So again, if you don't have to go to a different place and pull out a different kit and find the item that you need, it is much, much easier. Um, these are my favorite nipples to use. That is another area of contention. Everybody is very, very fond of a certain type of nipple. Um, I like these ones the best and I literally just put them on a water bottle. So even just throwing a water bottle and a couple of nipples into your supply kit is very smart because then it's there. So if you do need to milk mama and feed baby, you've already got your supplies for that. Um, so finally, vitamins and supplements. I do keep several just in our kitting kit. And then again, I have some just right next door, either in our um, just regular goat first aid kit or in our feed room. I keep a lot of supplies in there as well. Um, this one is a selenium and vitamin E gel. If you're in a selenium deficient area, hopefully you were giving really good minerals and vitamins during the time of, of baby developing. But if for some reason um, the dough needs additional vitamins, you can always do a piece like this. This can also help for baby. Bosi is a great one. Um, however, it is prescription only. So hopefully you have a good relationship with a vet and you can get a prescription for it if you need it in your area. Many people do give Bosi just precautionarily before kidding. That is an option as well. It's definitely not one that I'm against. It's just not one that we've ever had to do. So then I also have a vitamin B12 injection. Um, I also have a B complex injection and a high level B complex. Vitamin B is one of the best things that you can give if a goat is going downhill quickly. Vitamin B saves the day. We have had kids, um, young kids who've gotten polio, um, things like that. Vitamin B is so important to have on hand. One of the things that we do give mama is molasses in warm water. Um, molasses actually has a lot of trace minerals. It has some sugar. So if she's, you know, a little off on her blood sugar levels, it can help with that. And it's just a really good supplement to have. So when mama goes into the kidding stall, she gets warm water with molasses mixed into it. So we do usually keep molasses in our kidding kit, um, except we were using it to give our horse some butte and to trick it into taking the butte. And one of the chickens flew onto the counter in our feed room and knocked it to the ground. And have you ever cleaned molasses out of a cement floor? Oh my gosh, you don't want to. So that's what happened to our molasses. I don't know why that's relevant, but I just thought you'd like to know. 
other good things from your kitchen. Bananas are super good for getting mom's strength back up. The bananas are really good for just giving them that little boost of like vitamins and a little bit of sugars to kind of spring back, especially if they've had a really long or tough labor, it can be so helpful. Um, some other things, honey and cayenne pepper. Um, so especially if you have, you know, a kid or a mom who's kind of listless, rubbing some honey and cayenne pepper on their gums. So that can kind of help reinvigorate them. It kind of gets the blood flow going. So these are kind of good tricks to have on hand. They're not necessarily things I keep in my kit, but it's good to know what things you have on hand already that are normally in your kitchen that you can use in these situations if you need to. So I'm not gonna get too much into the weeds here on this, um, but if you have a case of like milk fever or pregnancy ketosis, some other good supplies to have on hand would be glucose test strips, which you can just get at your, you know, Walgreens, Walmart, in whatever pharmacy type of store you go to. They're the same ones that the people have. Um, so that's always good to have. And then also like CMPK gel. So that's really good if they end up with a touch of milk fever. It just kind of helps regulate all of those levels and kind of get them back to normal. So that's the majority of the things that I actually keep in my kitting kit at all times. So where do you get these items? Farm stores are great for that. Um, however, you can order a lot of things on Amazon. I do have a list of these items on my website and I do have links to some of them on Amazon. But my go-tos for any first aid supplies is actually either Jeffers or Valley Vet. Those are both online and they just have um, a bigger supply than usually what I can find at my farm store. I've noticed um, farm stores really vary. Like Tractor Supply does not have a lot of like medical supplies. Our local feed store is much more true to like a true feed store that has more of those items on hand. Um, but a lot of times I do end up going online and using either Valley Vet or Jeffers. Jeffers supply. So those are all good options. And then of course, for some of the basic supplies like thermometers, puppy pads, scissors, flashlights, things like that, you can of course pick up at like a Walmart or someplace like that. Okay, so now that we've looked at the supplies that I keep on hand for kidding, let's actually talk about our kidding stall. And I'm so excited that we actually have a kidding stall to show you. This has been years in the making and I don't know what it is, but you guys be careful because it's like when you get the nursery ready for a kid. As soon as we have gotten our kidding pen ready, one of our goats will go into labor every single time. So this is our kidding pen here in our barn and it is in a great location because our barn has power. It has electricity, which is huge. There is water access just outside, which is huge. And these are amenities that we have not always had. So. We are so thankful to have them now. The other great thing about it is it's located right between our primary goat pen and our feed room slash milk room, which has been another lifesaver. And I think I'll do a video about it at some point. Let me know if you're interested in that. But this is our kidding pen. So what we like about it is basically over our years, we kind of were able to figure out what we wanted and then build it into this pen. So it has this nice front where we can see and watch really easily. So we can just, you know, kind of sit out here on the outside. Mama can have her privacy, but we can see what's happening. So as we go in, it's a nice big pen that gives it room for mom to have enough room to be in there. Not all moms like to be like right near you when they're kidding. Most of them want their space, but yet we can still sit inside there as well if we need to. We have these rubber floor mats and you won't believe it, but we actually found these at like a repurposed construction lumber type store, um, kind of like a Habitat for Humanity store. Um, and they were actually used on a playground, like on a children's playground, and they are amazing. So they provide a really great base in here and they make it very comfortable and very easy to clean. And then we made a little lip to keep all the shavings from falling out. We made this little hay feeder. It is currently broken. I need to hook this back on. Don't judge us too hard. Um, the baby goat actually liked to sleep in it. The last one that we had in here, she slept in it like it was a little hammock. It was the cutest thing. But what we originally intended this for was during the off season, when we are not using the kidding stall, this nicely kind of folds down so that it's kind of nice and compact against the wall because not only is this our kidding pen, but if for any reason we need to isolate a goat or just have it separated for some reason, that's also what we use this pen for. Um, so it's nice to be able to just slide that up against the wall if we don't need it. 
we have a little bin for minerals. Um, super important that mama has some mineral access. And same with the babies, once they're a couple weeks old, we wanna make sure that they're having mineral access and feed them minerals, grain, things like that in there. Um, super handy to have one of those. We have a little hook here on the wall. This is a little carabiner hook that we've hooked into an eyelet screw and that is to hang their water on. What that does is it keeps the water elevated just enough that mama can reach it, um, but baby's not going to risk like tripping into it when they're still young, kind of fumbling around. Um, it just keeps it elevated and out of the way for a baby. At the back of the pen, we have this other hook here and what that is for is for our heat lamp. So the heat lamp can hook there and I actually have hooks at a couple different levels so that we can move it as needed. Now the cord goes over the wall and runs to the power on the other side, which again, we are so grateful to have power in our barn. Um, but what's great about this is it keeps the cord out of the way. They're not eating it. They're not getting tangled in it. Keeps the lamp at a great height for baby over here in the corner. And you will notice our heat lamps don't look like a traditional heat lamp. This is a Premier One heat lamp. They are basically the cream of the crop and one of the safest that you can get. This is a super hard plastic cover. So we have absolutely had our heat lamps break, our old ones. We've come in to find them broken with glass on the ground and there is nothing scarier. Now we've always had our regular heat lamps enclosed. We would actually build like cages basically out of like hog panels and things like that to keep baby from being close to them or ever bumping into them, but they're still really risky and it terrifies me. Like every time I see, you know, pictures of a barn fire from a heat lamp, like my heart breaks and it terrifies me. So <laughs> we did not waste any time getting a Premier One heat lamp, which reduces that risk by a lot. It's still possible, but it certainly, certainly makes things much safer. I feel more comfortable with these heat lamps. You know, granted, we still try to kid when it's warmer out, so we have to use these just as little as possible, but I feel better knowing a Premier One lamp is going to be a much safer option for us and for our goats to keep everything safe. Something else that we added this year to increase our safety is this. We now have a closed circuit system to monitor the kidding stall and our barn. In the past, we had used baby monitors, which work really well. And in a lot of areas where your barn is pretty close to your house, they can be a really great and very affordable solution. So this is a Smonit brand closed circuit um, camera. And basically, it there's four of them. You can go up to eight. I think you might even be able to do more, but we got the one where we can go up to four. So far, we have four cameras. Um, and so basically, there's then a monitor that goes with it and the signal sends back and forth from that box to the camera. That's as technical as I can get with you on how it works. Um, <laughs> we did have to get the additional receiver to kind of bump that signal. We are in like the deadest of dead zones. Like our Wi-Fi is barely even working here. <laughs> so we did have to get that. But what's great is that it doesn't rely on Wi-Fi. So while yes, you need Wi-Fi for the app and obviously like you need power and things like that, you don't need necessarily Wi-Fi to run the cameras. So that's why we ended up going with this brand after a lot of long hours of research and we have been so happy with them. It is amazing to turn on my TV um, or to be able to look on the app on my phone and see what's happening at all times. It's actually the reason why we bought a TV because you do need the receiver box hooked to something that can display it. So whether that's um, a computer or a TV, I didn't have my desktop computer at the time. We could have just hooked it to that. But those are the things you need basically to run these, but they work very well. We are so happy with it and it gives us so much peace of mind. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, we post about twice a week, so be sure you hit that subscribe button. We do a tutorial style video like this one on Tuesdays and then on Friday we have our vlogs. <laughs> So be sure you hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we have new videos coming your way. And if you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below and I'll see you all next time.